Take a look at your iPhone. Does it still feature a physical home button? Maybe it's an iPhone 7. Perhaps you're still rocking an iPhone 8. Then Apple's new third gen iPhone SE could be for you. Everyone else looking to upgrade their iPhone is better off opting for one of Apple's more larger iPhones so that it's newer because the new iPhone SE is still missing a lot of modern features. The iPhone SE doesn't offer optical zoom, its display is LCD, low resolution, and features an outdated 60Hz refresh rate. And overall, the smartphone looks like an ancient iPhone 7 from 2016. But in a sense, that's okay because the iPhone SE isn't designed for smartphone enthusiasts like me. Apple's very reasonably priced third gen iPhone SE is for people who really don't care about Geekbench scores and owning the latest tech device. They've been using an iPhone 6, 7, or 8 for years, and they want a new iPhone that's reliable, snaps great photos, and most importantly, is familiar and probably still features a home button. While it has obvious shortcomings, this is exactly what the new iPhone SE is. The latest version of the iPhone SE includes a few key upgrades. The A15 chip, 5G, stronger glass construction, and computational photography features like Deep Fusion. The A15 processor is the most notable new addition and gives the smartphone a worthwhile boost in raw performance. And while 5G hasn't lived up to expectations in Canada yet, it's great to see the technology make its way even to Apple's entry-level smartphone. Then there's the third gen iPhone SE's camera performance. Though the device lacks useful features like night shooting and optical zoom, it snaps photos shockingly close to on par with the iPhone 13 series in a lot of situations. Seriously, it's difficult to tell the difference between some images shot with both devices, and that really says something about Apple's behind the scenes computational photography, especially since the third gen iPhone SE features the same 12 megapixel sensor as its predecessor. Though to be fair, the SE's photos look just as good almost in some cases. Apple has been a leader in the computational photography space for years, and the new SE is no exception despite being an entry-level device. Still, I can't help but wish the third-gen iPhone SE borrowed features from Apple's more modern smartphones. For example, keep the same camera array but shift to a unique take on the squared off design from newer iPhones and ditch the physical home button entirely. But I get it, the home button is a big part of the iPhone SE's appeal for some people. But at some point, it really just needs to go because it's holding the iPhone SE back. The screen can still measure in at 4.7 inches, but the display, at the very least, is in dire need of a resolution increase. Of course, Apple would need to make all of these changes while still keeping the device's price relatively low, which would probably be a pretty difficult task. Maybe if Apple decides to keep the iPhone mini around for a few more years, it could turn into the low-cost iPhone alternative in the same way that the iPhone 11 and the iPhone XR was at one point. Perhaps we'll see an iPhone SE like this in a few years, but for now, Apple's entry-level iPhone is a solid smartphone for a very specific audience that just simply isn't fond of change and has no interest in making the jump to Google's Android ecosystem. And that's it. If you want to hear more of my thoughts on the iPhone SE and how it fits into Apple's ecosystem, check out the Syrupcast episode focused on the smartphone. Maybe the new iPhone SE isn't for you and you want a budget iPhone that's a little more modern, then check out Brad's video about the iPhone 11 as always, if you like this video, be sure to smash that subscribe button and also keep an eye out for all of the Apple related content we have hitting the channel in the next couple of weeks. Thanks for watching.